Hey, how's it going? Today I am talking about what is the best shoe to prevent injury or for specific injuries. This is Running to the Castle, a podcast for injury prone run Disney runners on a journey to running magical miles. Join me, Dr. Allie, as I share the secrets I've gathered as a runner, doctor of physical therapy, and coach. You'll learn the exact ways I get my clients to the castle strong without feeling broken or held together with KT tape as they cross the finish line. Okay, so I see this all the time. I get this question all the time. What shoe should I be wearing for my run Disney races? I'm not a fast runner. I run walk, but I get X injury. I have shin splints. My knee hurts. I have plantar fasciitis. My hip hurts. My back hurts. What shoes are the best to wear for this? So today I am diving into what type of shoe you should wear based on what kind of injury you have so that you can prevent further injury. Okay, so I, I'm specifically talking about this today because I saw it come up in a Facebook group. I'm going to pull it up on my phone right now so I can read it. And it says, done my longest run to date. This morning I'm having some knee pain. Recently just purchased a pair of out on cloud and they were very comfortable for about four miles. And then I started getting arch and knee pain. So I made a pit stop at home to change into my other shoe. To add, I wore my other shoe for a nine and a half mile run a week ago and had no pain at all during or after. So it looks like this person changed shoes, felt fine for the first four miles, then changed back into the shoes that they typically wear. And last week they wore the pair of shoes that they typically wear and had no problems at all. So looking at this, the person also did a screenshot of their race of how far they went and they did uh they did a half marathon they did 13.1 miles today so I am going to be disappointing a lot of people with this episode I know that for sure because it's not any one pair of shoes that you should wear in this particular case this person has knee pain and arch pain in their foot so that sounds like maybe a plantar fasciitis area of pain. And is it caused by the shoes? I don't know. Because at first glance, it looks like, oh, this might be caused by the shoes because they're a completely different shoe than than the other one. Now, it does say that her new shoe, according to the company, replaces her old shoe. So you would think that it would have nothing, that it could have nothing to do if it's supposed to be the same thing, right? Like uh, shoe companies, obviously they've replaced their shoes for, I don't even, I don't even know why they replaced their shoes, but they have a replacement for the old thing. So this new one is supposed to replace those. So whenever I see this come up in the Facebook groups, whenever one of my clients asks me about what are the best shoes to wear, I tell them all the same thing. Everybody's different because every body is different and everybody runs differently. So the top two things to look for when choosing a shoe are your uh, foot type and how you run okay so what do I mean by that foot type you can be flat-footed you can be neutral or you could be high with um with a high arch so when we're talking about foot type we're specifically talking about the arch of your foot so if you're flat-footed your arch is low or collapsed if you're neutral it's in the middle And if you're high arched, it's high. So if you, so that's one way. I'll talk about how to decide what type of foot you have in a minute. The second thing is how do you run? Like what's your running gait? Are you heavy footed? Do you run on your toes? Do you land with your heel first? Do you keep your feet under you when you run? Or is your foot further out from you? Do you land with um, 
a neutral foot, meaning do you basically your toes and your heel hit at the same time? Do you have a midfoot um, stance when you come down? All of these things and more, those are just the ones that came off the top of my head. Those are the things you look for with your running style in relation to your shoe, okay? How do you find what type of foot you are? The easiest way, you don't even have to go to a shoe store and stand on those plates. The easiest way to tell what kind of shoe you have is to look at your footprint when your foot is wet. So either stepping out of the shower or the easiest place to do it is when you step out of a pool and you step onto dry cement because you can see your foot outline. So a neutral foot will look like that stereotypical foot. You have your toes, then you have a wide area at your big toe, then it curves in just a little bit and then curves back out a little bit for where your heel is. And then the outside of your foot curves comes around and you have you have a whole footprint. You can see all aspects of that foot there. Okay? A flat foot looks like a big old blob. You don't have pretty much any space from where that big toe down to your heel is. Maybe you have a little space, but it's a big old blob. A high arch is you have your toes and then you have that area with your big toe and then it really cuts in and then really dives back out for where your heel is. Somebody with a super duper high arch sometimes has just like their toes and then this big old empty space, barely anything touching on the outside and then you see their heel again. So it's really drastic, okay? So think of neutral as your stereotypical foot, like foot placement, like the drawings that you see in cartoons or, you know, if you just Googled foot outline or something, what it looks like, that would be a neutral foot. And then can you see a whole blob? That's a flat foot. Can you see less of your foot compared to the neutral, that's a high arch, okay? So those types of things help guide where you're going with what type of shoe. Now, some people will say a neutral foot needs a neutral shoe. Not necessarily. And a high arch, people are gonna say, well, they need a flexible shoe because they have good stability in their high arch, so they don't need stability. That's also not true. And then somebody with a big flat foot should not wear a flexible shoe because they need stability. That's also not true. Somebody with a flat foot could do really well in the Vibrams, you know, those, uh, the toe shoes that have all of the individual spots. It's a really flexible shoe. They could do really well in um, a Nike Free. That's a super flexible shoe. But somebody with a high arch could also do really well in Vibrams and a flexible shoe. Or they could do really well in a stability shoe, something that has that stability for your arch. It all depends on what your foot is doing when you're running, which is why it's important to know what your gait is like when you run. Now, I don't always, I used to, do a running gait analysis and go with foot type. I leave that to the running stores now because I work solely online. When I was in person, I could do a much better job at it. But now online, it's harder to see. I can do it. It just takes more oomph from everybody involved. I have to get people getting multiple camera angles. Partners and spouse needs to get involved. It's a whole thing. I can also look at the bottom of your shoe, but that doesn't tell a whole picture, just part of it. And each of these things just tells part of the picture. But I leave that to the running store now, and then they can give a good recommendation. But what I do say is your shoe should be comfortable as soon as you put it on. If your arch is reacting to it when you put it on, put it away. If your muscles are already cramping being in it, put it away. Now, that's not to say that it doesn't feel 
tight and stiff, you know, like the toe box might be tight and stiff. Just like when you take a pair of jeans out of the washing machine or out of the dryer, they're tight and stiff and you have to like pull them on and then it takes some time for them to loosen up throughout the day. That part is normal. That's the aspect of breaking in a shoe that happens when you say you're breaking in a shoe. But in general, the shoe should feel good when you first start wearing it. It just needs that... Um, it's called the last. The last just needs to not be so tight and stiff because it just came off the manufacturing belt, right? Like it's it's the jeans just that just came out of the dryer. But after a little bit of time, they loosen up and and they they feel looser, so to speak. I don't want to say more comfortable because the comfort level you sh- they should be comfortable when you first put them on. So. And then looking at your running style, your gait style, if you land on your heel, like I'm not here to tell you you need to change all of the things that you um, are doing when you run. There are, there, there's one in particular that I do recommend everybody change and it actually has nothing to do with injury. It just, it's so inefficient. I used to do it and I've changed it and my God, it is so much better now. And I'll talk about that in a second. But look at how you're landing. If you're landing on your heel and if you're not sure, you can video yourself, but you can also look at the bottom of your shoe. Where is it worn down the most? That's where you're putting the most pressure. So if your heel is wearing down faster than your toes, you're putting more pressure there. Most likely you're putting pressure there when you land. So you would want a more cushiony shoe because you're landing hard on that. You need something to absorb the shock. And uh, the, the cushion that they put in the shoes is a great thing to absorb the shock. Another thing that can absorb the shock is your muscles. That's another conversation. But Look at either the bottom of your shoe or look at how you're running or have somebody analyze your gait at a running store so that you know how you run and use that information to help determine what kind of shoe you're wearing. But again, it's not the end all be all. If shoes were the end all be all, I would not be a running coach. I would be a shoe salesperson. I would sell you the pair of shoes that will work for whatever type of body you have, whatever type of injury you have, but it's not true. You won't find that. So I don't sell them because I would be selling you nothing and I would be just convincing you to oh buy this thing and that wouldn't be an integrity for me. So instead, I'm a running coach because there are so many different moving parts to running without an injury. And specifically, I help people who are injury prone or struggling with an injury while they're training for a run Disney race. So that's what is important, not the shoes. Again, if it was all about the shoes, I would be a shoe salesperson. Okay. It's not all about the shoes. Yes, they are important and they are uh, just a piece of the puzzle. But you can run in any type of shoe. I mean, even looking at the professionals, if it was any one type of shoe that was either bad or really good, you would see everybody wearing those. Like it happened years ago, years and years. God, I don't even know. With swimming, they noticed that swimmers were so much faster when when the swimmer was wearing that big bodysuit where it, it like for the females where it they had like the the material that went down their thighs to their knees i think i think it was speedo brand at the time but now you see every single swimmer wearing that because that made a difference as opposed to the traditional female um swimsuit that has the cut at the bikini line. They don't wear that anymore because it did make a difference. But with running, yes, there are, there are some slight differences between the different shoes, but you don't see every single professional runner wearing the same pair of shoes. So that goes to show that it's not the shoe itself because if 
if every runner wore shoe A and they all got shin splints, well, shoe A would be off the market. And every runner wore shoe B and they all got runner's knee, well, that shoe would be off the market. And we, and we would start seeing a narrowing down of the different shoes. But you see people wearing Brooks. You see people wearing Saucony. You see people wearing Nikes and Under Armour and, and all different brands. So it's not just any one shoe. Okay. I alluded to this. I wasn't going to talk about it because I alluded to it. I will quickly add, probably won't be quickly, but I will add the one running gait that I recommend people change, and it has nothing to do with injury prevention. It's running with your leg out in front of you. Run with your feet landing underneath your hips. I will end it with that. I will do a whole other podcast about that specifically and why I change it. So look, I really did make it quick. That was awesome. So it's not about the shoe. There's no specific shoe to prevent or heal an injury. So find something that's comfortable. And I will do, now that I'm thinking about this, I will do a whole other episode because we're hitting the 16 minute mark here. I will do a whole other episode about why why this person in particular had such problems with her knee and her foot in this episode. So I'm going to record that now so that I can um, not forget about it. Okay. Thank you so much for listening. As always, you can always find me on Instagram. I am the run Disney DPT. So at R U N D I S N E Y D P T. I am the run Disney doctor of physical therapy. I am helping run Disney runners who are injury prone or struggling with an injury while they're training for a run Disney race cross the finish line without feeling broken so they can feel strong and not like they need to be held together with KT tape. Okay, if you found this helpful, please go ahead and share it with somebody else you think will benefit from hearing this. That's all for now. Talk to you soon.